Uh, Gideon is a uh, highly cited and well-known researcher in primarily in the area of subsurface hydrology. Uh, so his uh, biographical uh, notes are available. Uh, for instance, uh, there is an uh, IAH time capsule interview with him. Uh, also, there is a biographical paper in Groundwater, uh, Wikipedia entries. So in this interview, we'll keep the biographical part relatively brief and focus more on the research uh, aspects of, of, of his, uh, you can say, life and work. So please, Gideon, if you can just give us a, a brief biographical uh, note about yourself. Thanks, Vladimir, and uh, my thanks to <coughs> Michel Quintar. I, I was born and grew up in Romania, where I uh, finished my education with a degree in hydraulic engineering and applied mathematics. <clears throat> By the end of my studies, I, uh, I was attracted during these studies by theoretical aspects and mathematical aspects uh, of, of, of my uh, education. Uh, and then I joined as a researcher the Institute of Hydrotechnical Research in Bucharest. That institute uh, had uh, physical models of hydraulic structures like dams and rivers and so forth. Um, each country at the time had such a big lab, but they have practically vanished or are regarded as dinosaurs because of computers have removed them from the scene. Uh, after three years as a researcher, I immigrated to Israel and uh, joined the Technion, the, Techn the Technical University of Israel, which had also a small hydraulic lab. Uh, I started to work in a project, uh, on sponsored project, uh, with uh, Jacob Baer, Dr. Jacob Baer, who just uh, returned from his PhD studies in Berkeley and joined the Technion staff. <clears throat> After the project was about um, saltwater intrusion in uh, Israel coastal aquifer and uh, skimming freshwater above the interface by a collector. Uh, after a half a year or so, uh, Jacob suggested to me to turn this uh, research into a PhD thesis, which I gladly accepted. And by 1965, I uh, received the doctoral degree and uh, I, I like to mention that a few papers which came out of my PhD work uh, are still cited uh, in the literature, which is something nice to see. Uh, after that, I joined the Technion academic staff and, uh, I, uh, in 1974, I was, uh, I was uh, promoted to the rank of full professor. In uh, two years later, in 1976, I moved from the Technion to the newly founded uh, Faculty of Engineering at Tel Aviv University, where I served uh, I serve until today. In uh, 2000, I became a professor emeritus. Um, so this somehow very briefly, uh, about my uh, milestones of my career. Um, I know for a fact that you have uh, uh, received several rewards. Can you name a few of those most important ones? Yes, I, I, I was fortunate to have my work recognized uh, and the rec this recognition manifested in a few awards international ones, 
like uh, uh, the uh, AGU, the American Geophysical Union, uh, the hydro hydrology section award, uh, I became a fellow, and then I I received the Horton Medal, and uh, I also received the Stockholm Water Prize in 1998. Um, in, in Israel, I also uh, I was granted a few awards like the Rothschild Prize, the Israel Prize, and uh, I was elected as a member of the Academy of Sciences. Besides, I got three honorary, honoris causa degrees from a few universities. Mm. Impressive. Uh, so if we now move a bit to, to your research activity, um, what, uh, what we, would you say are the main areas uh, of, of research in your, in your long uh, career? Um, my research is in, um, was, it still is, in the area of subsurface hydrology, uh, aquifer, and the flow and transport by groundwater in aquifers as well as uh, in the unsaturated zone <clears throat> above the water table. Um, my approach was to deal with the properties, hydraulic properties uh, at the Darcy scale, which means that, uh, for instance, permeability is, uh, is regarded as a point value and changing continuously in space. Uh, so I didn't deal really with, uh, with the problems at pore scale. I did some work on that, but my main activity was on large formations. Uh, I can divide my uh, research roughly into, into two periods, one until uh, 1979, in which uh, I think worked on formations, homogeneous formation with constant properties in space. And my work was for, focused mainly on solving uh, problems of free surface or water table flow or interface between fresh and salt water flow. And I developed uh, some approximate approaches to solve these difficult problems. In 79, I switched uh, and um, started to address the heterogeneity of natural formations and uh, which uh, became a, a discipline known as stochastic subsurface hydrology. And I'm working on that until these days. Um, so, if if we now concentrate on on this uh, large part of your uh, work, uh, so on stochastic subsurface hydrology, can you tell us more how this developed? Well, uh, it started from the realization that natural formations, unlike laboratory ones, uh, are heterogeneous. That the properties and primarily the hydraulic conductivity changes by orders of magnitude in the same formation. Uh, and this spatial variability has a large impact on flow and transport and primarily on transport uh, because uh, due to this variation in permeability, the velocity field also changes in space. There are zones of low velocity where the solutes are practically uh, immobile, immobilized and there are quick paths. And all this translates in an enhanced uh, spreading compared to the one uh, observed in laboratory conditions. Um, this, um, now, these properties like permeability uh, are subjected to uncertainty because observations, measurements are, are scarce and uh, they also uh, are seemingly erratic, but 
varying in an erratic manner in space. And this has led to modeling uh, properties as a random space function, which uh, to capture uncertainty. And uh, similarly, the velocity and the head and all the dependent variables uh, are, are regarded as random. Um, now, um, this has led to a kind of change of paradigm, abandoning the classical uh, approach. Um, since uh, this development had an impact on contamination of groundwater, a topic of uh, great importance, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, community of stochastics also has, uh, has evolved with uh, many scientists from different area joining it. Uh, I was privileged to collaborate with a few younger and brilliant uh, uh, scientists. Uh, one of them is nearby here, and that's the reason he is, <laughs> he is here. And uh, besides uh, others like Aldo Fiori and Yora Rubin, and this was a uh, uh, reward which uh, is not less than the awards I mentioned. My contributions until 19, 1989 were uh, summarized or described in a book uh, published by Springer Verlag. And, uh, but uh, afterwards, more developments uh, were published in articles in the literature. Uh, thanks uh, for these kind words also. Uh, so so from obviously this is a vast opus opus of work. Uh, so what would you uh, single out or as a kind of the most important contribution in your view uh, that you have made to, 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 to the field of stochastic subsurface hydrology? Uh, well, there were a few contributions. I think one of the most uh, relevant is development of model of transport by the Lagrangian approach, which led to analytical or semi-analytical or analytical expressions for macro dispersivity. That's a coefficient which uh, characterizes the enhanced spreading uh, due to heterogeneity and macro dispersivity uh, is a de de its dependence on the underlying heterogeneous structure and uh, of permeability, and L as well as depending on travel time of, of plumes. I think that uh, that simple result, which has been validated also by comparison with uh, field experiments, is really uh, somehow. Uh, encapsulates uh, most of my contribution, but not exclusively. Um, as a deeply involved researcher in yourself, what do you think, what is your opinion? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I agree that this is, um, uh, this was a major, major contribution. Um, um, one can say that following this groundbreaking work that you did in the, uh, let's say, first half of the 80s, um, you continue to develop this theoretical framework um, until this very day. Uh, and, and you addressed many different uh, and relevant issues, uh, for example, ergodicity, transients, uncertainty, extreme heterogeneity, etc. So um, I, in my view, uh, the, 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 the significance of, 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 of this uh, work that you did originally uh, and then followed by all the work is that it kind of con connects into a coherent and most complete 
uh, and applicable theory of, of groundwater uh, flow and transport that, that we currently have? Um, I would like now to, the last part of our, this interview, to, to start a dialogue with you about perspectives on stochastic modeling of ground of uh, subsurface hydrology and the pressing problems uh, we face. Uh, the angle I propose is the one related to the background and approach of the different groups which contributed and contribute to this discipline. Uh, like uh, hydrogeologists, engineers, uh, statistical physicists, uh, uh, field investigators, uh, managers, each of these groups which contributes to, uh, to the discipline has uh, brought he, he, its angle and perspective. And why this diversity has enriched the field, it also led to fragmentation. Uh, and I wonder if you, what do you think about this? Yes, uh, yes, uh, it, it has. Um, and I think one reason for this fragmentation is, is that there is the scarcity of data that you uh, mentioned earlier as a motivation to, to use the stochastic tools. So uh, if we had more evidence, more data, this would of course help to discriminate and um, between uh, validate conceptual approaches. So every aquifer is unique and it's difficult to, to access. So uh, this of course, and it's complex, the processes are complex. So uh, this affirms that we need uh, tool, a theory, a good theory as a basis for predictive tools, but it also makes the validation of these tools uh, more difficult. And, and that itself then is, is a ground for, for uh, on the one side, the, the, the fragmentation, and on the other side, maybe some confusion that may exist among uh, practitioners as to what to use. Um. Going on along this line, uh, we, both of us, we come from engineering background, at least as long, as far as our undergraduate studies went, and also our uh, uh, belonging to faculties of engineering. Uh, so I, I think that I would like to say a few words about our angle and uh, as engineering angle, I think uh, there are a few uh, facets, a few aspects which are specific. Uh, first of all, when we develop models, and that's what was my main and your activity, to develop models, to uh, quantify uh, the, the, uh, the use quantitative models to solve uh, the problems and to compare with uh, uh, experiments. Um, all this is done by those from engineering background, keeping in mind the goal, which is application to real life problems. This, I think, has an important impact on the way we develop and solve problems. And it is different from uh, the approach of basic science, which, uh, and uh, also from a very practical um, uh, empirical uh, uh, developments. So this is one aspect of engineering approach. Another one is that we need to develop tools which are accessible to practitioners. So using, uh, using approaches which are familiar to, to them. And uh, th this means to simplify and uh, to, to render as results as simple as possible. 
And then the need to have tools which can be used uh, immediately, although they, we realize they need still improvement, but we have to provide provisory results which approximate, which are applicable, and we cannot uh, delay uh, the, this until everything is solved. What is your opinion about this view of the, our approach? Uh, yeah, I I, uh, I would add that uh, uh, predictive tools with the the, the underlying assumptions uh, are a choice, and and this uh, uh, depends on the overall goal of an application. Uh, so so I I think that uh, it's important for the practitioners and researchers to to work closer together. Uh, on, on groundwater flow and transport issues to, to jointly make uh, better, better choices. This brings me to the conclusion of this interview. Uh, in my view, expressed also in a few articles, uh, the most pressing challenge of stochastic subsurface hydrology is the need to close the gap between uh, theoretical advanced developments and application to solving practical problems. And uh, I, I think that this is one, one if not the most pressing issue we have to, to face and solve. Do you share this view? Yes, definitely, definitely. I believe that this gap can be closed uh, by, a, by a better collaboration between researchers and practitioners that on the one hand need to push for more exper uh, field experimentation. Uh, and on the other hand, they, they need to work together to jointly define goals and, and sort of choose uh, most effective predictive tools. So as we, I think, confront the, the challenges, the new challenges of water resources uh, management um, I believe that this collaboration between practitioners and researchers uh, will be increasingly initiated uh, from the practitioner side. And, and this is something that I have uh, personally experienced over the last uh, five, five years. Uh, this brings us to the conclusion of this interview. And if we agree about uh, uh, the task, I think that we, those with engineering background and approach, um, have a special responsibility to carry on along these lines and uh, to initiate also from our part uh, a collaboration with uh, practitioners. Uh, and uh, with this, uh, program uh, in mind, let's uh, say goodbye. Uh, thank you very much, Gideon, for this uh, interview. It was a great pleasure and honor. Um, and hopefully uh, this, uh, the dialogue we've had, uh, and especially the things that you have, uh, that you could say here, uh, will help this, uh, this process of, of bringing closer the researchers and, and practitioners. And also thanks to, again, once again, to Interpor for making this interview possible. So thank you. Thank you.